Hello and welcome to another Spore Creation Tips and Tricks video. In this video series, I will demonstrate and explain various techniques used in creating or answer questions that you may have. Keep in mind these are all of my own opinion and that Spore is diverse enough that you may come up with your own techniques. If you wish to see the rest of the series, check the playlist in the upper right hand corner or at the end of the video. For this video, I'd like to cover over anatomy and proportions, and that is to make the creation look believable and to look like it can actually hold itself up. Now, it is extremely important that we do not confuse anatomy and proportions with accuracy and science, because at the end of the day, Spore is simply a game, and it is a wonderful game that you can create your own characters and creatures with and understand its limitations, and instead of striving to make something incredibly scientifically accurate, instead just create a creature that looks believable, that looks like it can walk, it can stand up straight, and it can generally support its own body mass. This is an extremely key thing that I try to keep in mind in pretty much all of my creations, and in my opinion it's probably the most important, yet easily the most forgotten thing when it comes to making creatures. In my opinion, a creature that has a body mass that looks like it can stand and walk looks far more impressive than a scrawny or obese creature that has a plethora of details but looks like it would collapse under its own weight. Now when it comes to trying to remember this, I have one simple question for you. Does your creature look like it could survive the effects of gravity? Now of course I'm not referring to any like exotic uh, gravity, like any uh, very heavy or very light. No, I simply mean does your creature look like it can stand up? Does it look like it can support its head? Does it look like any part of it is going to crush itself? That is what I am referring to when I ask the question, uh, does it look like it can survive gravity? Take my Jai for example. This is a far more recent and more um, modern interpretation of my own Jawi. This time I've tried to, you know, have a little bit more focused on proportions as opposed to the general details. Like, as you guys can see, generally the Jawi creature is very simple. It is simply a raptor, a very stylized raptor, but a raptor regardless, with a couple of sails, some horns, and that is pretty much it. It is a very simple creature, and yet it is a very beloved creature. This creature looks believable, despite it having, compared to a scientifically accurate creature, it has very glaring flaws, and yet this creature looks like it could walk, it could hunt, you know, it could behave, it could survive. The reason for that is, quite simply, the first thing that you want to consider is balance. Does it look like it's going to fall forward or fall backwards, etc, etc? I will admit the Jowie does actually look like it can fall forwards, but I will describe that more in a moment. Now, when it comes to balance, I want you guys to imagine a line going down this creature, a vertical line that demonstrates the centre of its gravity, where all the weight is proportioned. The goal is that with this line, you want that line to be as close to the feet as possible. That way, if the centre of gravity is focused on the feet, on the legs, on the hips, it actually looks like the creature can keep itself stable. If, however, you have that centre of gravity, that line, a little bit too far to the back or a little bit too far to the forwards, despite it having, you know, large strong legs, it may look like the creature is going to fall over, fall forward, fall back. And as I was going to say, I would admit this Jowie does have a bit of that issue. It does look like it will fall slightly forward. I've tried to combat this by having a larger neutral tail, a bit of weight in the tail, and to have the feet be extremely large. If you were to compare this to, say, a regular raptor, a scientifically accurate dromosaur, you'll find that the feet are a lot smaller, and of course all the weight is in the hips. But after all, sport is not about being accurate, it's about having your own enjoyable creations to play with. And this is my personal, this is my favourite example. Another thing to factor in is not just balance, but also musculature, muscle mass. Now, I'm not saying you guys should go ahead and discover the entire musculature of your creation, but mainly give it a bit of bulk. Give it some bulk. Don't make it scrawny. Don't make it skinny. Make it look like this creature can actually eat something and digest that food. Make it look like its skeleton actually holds organs, it actually holds fat, holds muscle. A prime example I can give to that point there is this creature here, the horned raptor. This is one of my, well this was in fact my first ever creation. And as you guys can see, it may look interesting, but it looks really bad, doesn't it? And I guarantee you the reason it looks bad is because it is horribly skinny, very scrawny, very weak and pathetic looking. And let's face it, this thing could not stand up at all. Like, it would just get, it wouldn't get crushed per se. This thing looks like it would just get blown away by a gentle breeze. And while we're not after accuracy, that lack of realism, in my opinion, really affects the general design. On a first, in a first impression glance, it just looks pathetic. 
However, when we compare that skinny and scrawny horned raptor to a more modern approach, as you guys can see here, the details themselves are pretty much the exact same. In fact, it's got more spikes than it did before. Uh, the wings are probably a little bit smaller, in fact, compared to beforehand. The face is a little bit different, but the biggest key thing is, the thing that makes this creature look a lot more whole, is the fact that it has muscle mass, it has thickness, it has a body. I am not saying make your creations thick or anything like that, but what I am trying to say is once again just make it look like it can stand up. Now just like with the Jowie, this does actually have the issue of looking like it can fall forward on itself. So what I would do to fix that, personally, is I'd make the tail significantly larger I'd perhaps make the tail a little bit longer as well, although of course with it being vanilla spore it's kind of a bit tricky to do. But more than anything else, right now when I look at this creature with its thickened tail perhaps we can make the neck point up just a little bit more, just a tad. When I look at this I kind of see the line of balance would be probably around here. I would say maybe there at a push because the thicker tail really dramatically brings back that mass, that balance. So with that in mind, the line being around here, I will simply move the feet a bit more forward. Probably make the ankle or the shin a little bit thicker. And there we go. All of a sudden, this creature now looks like it could happily walk around without having much balancing issues. Now, of course, you can be a little bit more stylistic with this, a bit more creative. For example, let's say the creature did look like it was lurching forward a bit. Well, you could say that the wings kind of help keep it balanced or any other detail that you may have. After all, this is your own creation. It doesn't have to be amazingly accurate or follow the general laws of physics, but in my opinion, it should, at the very least, obey gravity and obey mass. Now here, I'd like to give an example made by another creator. This is the Grand Dragon made by the creator Mouthwash, and this, in my opinion, perfectly follows the general rules or proportions. But on top of that, as you guys can see, this creature, while looking very nice and very polished and very almost realistic in terms of proportions, it is very, very simple. Notice the complete lack of details. The only details that exist on this creature are around the face, which his head is a little bit bulky, is the spines going down his neck, and a little bit around the tail. Otherwise, that's about it. And you know what? I think this is a fantastic creature despite the complete lack of details because in my opinion, proportions just add so much more. I've always felt like a proportionally simple creature just typically on a first per on a first impression glance looks a lot better than a massively detailed yet self-crushing creation. Now the reason that Mouthwash has managed to succeed in this kind of appearance is for two reasons. Now first of all, as you guys can see here, the general body mass is very thick, very large. You can tell it's got a large strong rib cage. It's got a very strong pelvis. This thing is, you can tell it's a large creature. Its neck is upright, but its neck is still thick enough and head small enough where it feels like it could hold its own neck up without, you know, crushing its neck or anything like that. The tail is nice and long. It doesn't have to be up and stiff. Instead, this tail looks fairly relaxed, which again makes sense considering the majority of the mass is all centered around the four legs and the neck upright isn't lurching forward, so it does not need a counterbalance of the tail behind it. And the second thing being the arms and the legs. Now the arms and the legs, you can you can definitely argue that they are they do look a little bit thin, a little bit small. I personally think it works for two reasons. The feet are quite large, they're quite spread out. Sure, it probably wouldn't be able to tiptoe like that, but hey, it's spore. I mean, you guys still take these things with a pinch of salt. And I personally find that these claws, this type of foot, works very, very well for the more thinner arms and wrists. Not only that, but because this creature has all of its weight balanced onto four legs instead of two, it feels like it can get away with having, you know, a little bit less mass in the arms and legs, because after all, like a table, a table could be a very large, flat structure with a bunch of weight on top of it, but the table legs are very thin and very rigid. That's all it needs, is to be strong enough where it won't collapse under its own weight, and I feel like this creature demonstrates that perfectly. Now, here is a far more stylized and dramatic creature, and yet still, in my opinion, another fantastic example of proportions and general obeying the laws of gravity. This is the Delaphy by the creator Galactic Dolphin. Now, clearly it's a quadruped, but what's interesting about this creature is the absolute sheer length of its forearms and how generally this gives the idea of a very tall creature. The majority of its mass appears to be in its shoulders and ribcage, perhaps a little bit around the 
pelvis, but as you guys can see very clearly, the very strong shoulders and biceps along with the strong thighs, they very clearly give it enough structure to support it. And the way that the arms lurch so far forward with the very large claws walking on its knuckles, again, it gives a very strong sense that this creature has absolutely zero issue traversing. It can probably climb despite it, you know, in my opinion, being what could be a very large animal. I could see this being a tremendously large creature, yet having absolute grace walking around. The neck, of course, looks like it would be, you know, structurally quite weak, but that's where, you know, like a bit of uh, a bit of imagination, a bit of creativity comes in. However, saying that, despite the neck looking like it'd be a little bit weak, it's actually very thick and the head is small enough where it doesn't seem that far-fetched. Plus, additionally, to the whole, you know, line of, um, the line of gravity we were referring to earlier, the line of balance, you could argue that the creature looked like it'd be lurching forward, except Galactus has already approached that and already solved that issue by having the, uh, the uh, hands being so far forward. I would imagine this creature, if it was to ever trip up and fall over, I would imagine it being able to balance itself almost immediately. Now, what's very interesting about the Delphi is that Galactus has actually created another version of this. So we have the quadruped version we just looked at, and we have the bipedal version here, which has pretty much the exact same traits as the quadruped, but the general stance and skeleton have been adjusted so that it can happily walk on its back two feet. Overall, it does look to be about the same, but some key differences, such as the shoulders and the torso have been brought back significantly, so now we can see that the general centre of gravity would be pretty much spot on through the middle, maybe just about where the belly kind of starts to poke out, that'd be the line of gravity. However, she's already managed to tackle this perfectly, with the legs being adjusted ever so slightly, now they are both perfectly beneath the rest of the torso, very happily holding the rest of that weight. The arms are just as big as they were before, but now they are significantly bent back, and even taking into account how tall this creature is and how long the arms are, they're bent so that they do not constantly get, you know, like clipping through the floor or anything like that. Additionally, the neck is remained about the same, the head's remained about the same, so it does still have that uh, very large crooked neck appearance, but because there's so much weight going on in the back of this creature, in the legs, in the shoulders, in the chest, etc., it, despite the head lurching ever so slightly forward, it still looks like it would happily wander around on its back two legs. Now this here is a far more creative and interesting creation by the creator Vedafan2012 called the Croplod. And I've chosen this creature because it is far more unique in its stance and yet it still perfectly obeys the general laws of gravity. Now as we can see here, it's very clear that the majority of this creature's weight is going to be somewhat in its torso, but mainly in this position here, this portion of the neck, and also by far in the tail. Now this one is a fantastic balance between creativity and imagination, a very stylistic creation, which still looks like it could at least stand up and walk. Now if we take this neck for example, typically that would look like it would just simply crush, crush itself and fall backwards, but fortunately we are not playing with science here, we are playing with pretty much the illusion and the impression that this creature can function and walk around. The general position of the arms and legs, in my opinion, are pretty much spot on. You would want the shoulders to be fairly far forward, and you would want the hips to be at around the midsection between the torso and the tail, especially for how thick the tail is. This creation is a perfect example that, you know, your semi-realistic creations don't always have to be incredibly realistic. They can be wacky and wild, they can be very detailed, very unusual, and yet they can still work perfectly fine. Now this here is another far more stylistic and far more creative example, the Tory V6 by Slain Dracon. And this one, I have to say, it's far more interesting. Now clearly, <laughs> you know, creatures nowadays, they don't have six limbs, they don't have wings coming out from their hips, any of that kind of stuff. So scientifically, it's out the window, but once again, we're not playing with science, we're playing with the impression and the idea that it could function. And in my opinion, this actually works quite nicely. Just like what I'd expect to see in this kind of creation, I would want, I would expect a lot of the mass and weight to be around its hips because that is where both its thighs, its hips, its tail, and evidently the wings are all situated, and yet this creature fulfills that criteria perfectly. With all that weight being situated around this area here, the legs you would assume would be directly underneath, and you know what, they are. Now the legs are quite scrawny, they are quite thin, but I feel like that is nicely balanced by the large thighs up here and of course the large feet down here it feels like this one, I have the impression this is a rather delicate creation or a rather delicate creature but the stylistically large feet feels like it can walk fairly fine 
the wings, which clearly has some strength in them due to the fact that they have claws, so they have hands, and they're very thick in terms of musculature compared to the rest of the creation. I have the impression that this creature was to ever, you know, have a bit of a stumble, be a little bit off balance, it could easily, instantly balance itself by using its wings. In fact, even more so, I have the impression that as this creature walks around, it probably would wave its wings around in a far more, you know, like realistic fashion. Obviously, Spore has its limits, so it doesn't really <laughs> capture what I'm imagining here. When it comes to the rest of this creature, so all the ways to be situated in the thighs, now as has, you know, clearly been done, the creators thought very hard about this, I would assume that the rest of the weight would be fairly upright. Maybe, I wouldn't say far forwards. I'd say it's probably a little bit further forward than I would really expect, but I could just be, you know, my own bias. I still feel like this has worked perfectly well. The neck is upright, which is exactly what I want to see. This head is very small. Overall, this is like another one of those very stylistic, very creative creations, which are just not accurate in any sense compared to like any earthen creature and yet it just feels like it would work it feels like this creature would wander around perfectly fine and it truly is these things that really in my opinion make a small creation far more unique and pop out far more this is also another fantasy example of how the creature itself is fairly low detailed the majority of the details is either in the wings or simply a bit of plumage which is still around the wings or its mane Otherwise, detail-wise, it has pretty much nothing, just the bare basics, just the bare basic form. And the form is so much more important than the detailing. Get the form right first, and you can detail until your heart is content, or until the complexity, complexity meter says no. And so with all that, guys, I would like to give a demonstration of all of this put together into one of my older creations, the Ignis Dracos. This is a creation I used to be very proud of when I was younger, but looking at it now, I can see all sorts of horrendous flaws. The biggest one being that, one, the general centre balance is fairly off, but mainly two, the scrawny mass of the, of the um, hips, the tail, and mainly those hips that I get, I get crushed by anything in an instant. So to fix this creature, first of all, I will activate freedom. That way I have the ability to do what I want with it. And of course, add DNA. Now, look at this creature. The absolute first thing I want to fix is the hips. Those hips are truly horrendous. They get crushed in an instant. Let's give it some mats. And in response to that, since I have the impression that this creature would be like a fairly, fairly large animal, I'd like to increase the size of the torso and the chest as well. With this body now looking quite a bit larger, the tail now looks incredibly pathetic by compare. If anything, I would actually like to get rid of the tail entirely, shrink it all the way back, move the entire creation forward and give it a limb tail. Now I use these limb tails for two reasons. One, they're cheaper in terms of complexity and they are easier to manipulate, but mainly two, the spine can only extend so far in spore, whereas the tail will give you far, far more potential. If you're interested in any of the keyboard shortcuts that I use, how to do things such as breaking the limbs apart or duplicating parts, you guys can see all of that in my first episode of this tips and tricks series, The Basics. A standard tail looks significantly more functional, or not massively accurate or anything of the sort, but it at least looks functional. I'll go ahead and leave it like that for now. But now, as we can see, the torso, the hips and the legs and the tail looking generally more structurally sound, all of a sudden, the legs look really pathetic by compare. I'm going to simply increase the size of those legs, mainly the thighs and a little bit of the ankles and the shins. And I'm going to also make the feet significantly smaller. Bring the entire thing backwards so it's a little bit more centered. Positioning wise, it is pretty fine for a basic demonstration. Now this creature looks like it can stand up. It does, however, still look like it could fall forwards. There are three ways I can combat this. I can either, one, change the position of the tail make it a little bit more stiff and rigid and just generally a little bit longer, perhaps a little bit thicker. By doing that, I can now move the legs even further back. I can too make the feet a little bit larger or probably more likely a little bit longer like I had the Jowie and just generally move it a little bit more forward. When I look at this creature from the front side, the feet do feel very awkward in their positioning. So by holding tab, I'm gonna rotate them slightly outwards, just like that. So now it looks like it has a little bit better control, a little bit better positioning. By doing that, I can actually move the ankles a little bit further inwards and now it looks quite a bit, you know, more comfortably positioned. The third way I can also adjust all this is by manipulating the wings to make them feel a little bit more flaring outwards 
Although it's kind of hard to do that with this current uh, wing setup. So looking at the creation now, overall the general body seems about okay. The arms, I think, would go just a little bit back and probably just a little bit shorter, hands a little bit smaller, and otherwise I think they're actually quite okay as they are now. The neck and the head, now this is a major flaw that I really dislike when it comes to creations, and that is the head looking slapped on. Mainly, this little bump here, and I'll go into this in greater detail in a, in a future video. But as a quick little fix for this, I'm going to go ahead and make the uppermost vertebrae significantly larger, position the head a little bit more forward and rotate it in. Now it looks like that the head isn't slapped on top of a vertebrae, but instead it's fused as part of the spine. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and change the wings. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and remake them entirely because the current form of them were just fairly awkward. It doesn't matter hugely what kind of limbs that you decide to choose to do these with, however, some do have their perks and some have their merits. I will once again go over this in further more detail in a future video as when it comes to the different variety of limbs you can use in creation, it can get quite complex. Now the wings don't have to be any like amazing craftsmanship, for the sake of this demonstration I'm going to go something fairly simple. Simply like that, so they look like a second pair of arms, so just holding, they're just held backwards instead of forwards and I'm just going to give it some plumage. As I mentioned earlier, when it came to the whole center of, balance, center of balance, it felt like the creature could benefit with the wings kind of, you know, adding a lot of weight backwards, mainly above its hips, or generally whichever limb of the creature is holding it up from the ground. That is where you want your center of balance to be uh, dependent on. So now that the creature overall looks structurally sound, the wings are a bit messy, but again, this is only for demonstration purposes. Overall, it looks pretty functional now. If anything, I'd make the eyes significantly smaller and closer forward. Dragons, I imagine, are a predatory creature and therefore I'd like to have their eyes facing forward like a real predator. Nostrils a little bit smaller as well. Otherwise, that to me is about it. And compare it to a reborn variant I've made of the creature in the past, as you guys can see here, it pretty much follows the same general rules of the creature, just far more structurally sound, far more stylistic and interesting to look at. Or alternatively, we can compare the creature to this version here, which was a far more bulky variant I had in mind for it. As you guys can see here, there's a lot of weight going on, a lot of general detailing, features, etc. But the majority of the weight you'll find is either on the base of the tail, on the hips, on the neck, generally overall in the centre portion mass of the creation. To wrap up the video, first of all, I apologise if this was a very ranty video, but proportions, there's a lot to cover, there's a lot of examples I can give, and it is, in my opinion, the most important part about making creatures in Spore, as well as, of course, having fun. As we said earlier on, the easiest way to remember all of this is by that very simple question, will your creature survive under gravity? It is as simple as that. You can always use references of real life creatures to try and get a general idea of proportions of where certain things position, but otherwise, allow your imagination to take over. Just, uh, just always remember that key rule. Make it look like that your creature can actually keep itself upright. As soon as you tackle all that, then go crazy on the detailing until your heart is content. If you have any suggestions for techniques or any questions that you'd like answered, a comment down below. I hope this video has helped you and good luck in creating.